All right, so we are going to just do a little brief demonstration. And uh, <laughs> I have uh, my colleague here, future colleague. Jake is one of our senior medical students. He's an OMM fellow. Um, so he's a, essentially a fifth-year student, a pre-graduate fellow who's working in our department, seeing patients uh, half of the day and helping us teach students half of the day. And, and volunteering at night. And volunteering at night, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want a demo or you want me to demo. Go Doesn't for it. I already took my shoes off, man. All right, he's ready. All right. So, um, you know, we really uh, are just going to show you a couple, couple simple things. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways to treat. When I'm working with, I, I see patients half of the day in the morning, just like I mentioned with Jake, and then in the afternoons typically I'm working with our students in lectures and labs or, or testing students, etc. And um, when I'm seeing a patient, uh, there, there oftentimes is this thought in my head, do I need to try and maybe release some tension in muscles, myofascial tension, and approach it that way, or do I think that a joint needs to pop? Do I need to, to articulate a joint? Uh, and I think everybody might have a concept of that. Some people pop their own, their own bodies uh, or self-manipulate or have been treated by others that do that. So if I find a restriction, I I'm oftentimes wonder, do I, do I need to maybe stretch this or do something else to release tension? Or perhaps is there a, a joint restriction that we just need to get it to move? So an example of uh, a myofascial approach, and there's a couple different ways to do this, if we're just looking at tension in the hamstrings, this can be really important for issues like knee pain, hip pain, low back pain, etc. If we look for the tension in his hamstring here, we can see that Jake doesn't get too far with this right knee extension. When the hamstring's tight, it's going to tend to limit that. One way to treat that, uh, you know, kind of a typical uh, approach might be to stretch it, you know, you know, we can all stretch at home. I could do some stretching type work. We could use a, a really nice simple technique that we call muscle energy where we go up to that barrier again and we just have Jake pull down, contract the muscles. There's something called post-isometric relaxation where once he relaxes, we can take that a little further to the next barrier. And we may do this to three to four barriers. It's one way to, to help trick the muscle into relaxing by engaging it. But that'd be a direct way to do this. We're actually taking them to new barriers. We're directly uh, attempting to lengthen that muscle. Another way to do this would be to look for a strain pattern or, or uh, tension in the muscle. You know, we have three, three muscles here with our hamstrings. Those are, those are tender. So looking here at the medial side, we have the semimembranosus and semitendinosus tendons that come down to the medial knee. And if I find an area that's tight or tender or both, and it clearly looked tender to Jake, we can flex the knee. So we're kind of doing the opposite of stretching. This would be an indirect myofascial type technique and put him in a position where it feels softer and less tender when I poke on him. And if we hold this here, sometimes this will release. It might take five to 10 seconds. It might take even up to 90 seconds. This type of technique we will call strain counter strain and I won't quiz you on that later. But uh, this would be an indirect way to treat, a very gentle way to treat. He's completely relaxed, or, or as relaxed as possible, and we are shortening that muscle as opposed to stretching it. And hopefully, if we can get it to release, again, it may take up to 90 seconds, uh, and I didn't hold him that long. Then when we recheck, we're hoping that it's, that it's easier to extend him. So that would be an example of how we can use different techniques, um, particularly to lengthen, tightened, or shortened muscles. Should we show you how to pop something or what it looks like? Can you sit up and face them? Have you had this treated recently? No. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to use my hands here, kind of sweep down his posterior rib cage and look for some prominent rib <laughs> angles that when, when the ribs are sticking out a little bit, a little bit restricted posteriorly, they're oftentimes pretty tender on this rib angle, the prominent part of the rib here, just lateral to the spine. So on this left side, 
at this one more or this one? Or both? I'd say posterior fourth and fifth rib uh, are prominent and tender. So have you lay on your back. These are st- typically structural rib issues as, as opposed to maybe more of a respiratory. Can you scoot a little closer to me? Yeah. Normally, uh, my table in my office goes up or down really nice with buttons and so forth. Like all the, all, like all the tables in labs, the students will tell you. Uh, so this is a little bit higher. Normally, I have the table at about the high of my knee. So I'll try and get over the top here. This is, this is the tables we had when I was in school here. And they had little lifts for the shorter folks. <laughs> well, if your heart stops, I'll just push on that rib. Yeah. Deep breath in for me. And out. Oh, and it just went. <laughs> Cheap date. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could hear that pop through the microphone, but there was a nice little pop, pop, pop. Let me have you sit up and face away from me again. And so, of course, you always want to recheck. And uh, the ribs don't feel as prominent. Now, there may still be some tenderness if I really dig in on him, but yeah. good. <laughs> so that's, that's one way to articulate a rib and, and uh, free up that joint restriction. Where that rib meets the, the vertebra uh, can be a little bit restricted and kind of hold that back. 